If you're clicking on this video, I'd assume that you've heard the news. Martin Truex Jr. is retiring at year's end. So I thought I'd make a video going over his career a little bit, paying some respect to Martin Truex Jr., an all-time great driver, and also talk about who could potentially be driving that fourth car for Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What did you think about Martin Truex Jr.'s career? What was maybe your favorite moment from his career? Plus, who do you think is going to drive for Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025? So today, it was announced that Martin Truex Jr. is retiring from the NASCAR Cup Series. I feel a little bit on the fence about this just to start off with. I think Martin Truex Jr. definitely has something left in the tank. I would also consider him one of my favorite people in the sport. I wouldn't say necessarily one of my favorite drivers, but he's one of my favorite people in the sport. It just seems like he gets along with most people. I've seen the way he interacts with fans. He's, he's just a really great guy, a really great race car driver, of course, as well. No doubt about it, in my mind, he will be a first ballot Hall of Famer in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. But this just checks off another popular, strong driver in NASCAR that has retired over the last 10 or 15 years. NASCAR looks so much different than it did 10 or 15 years ago. At this point, the only drivers that we really have from the mid to early 2000s is Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin. It's a whole new NASCAR than it was just 10 or 15 years ago. Like I said before, I consider Martin Trix Jr. a potential first ballot Hall of Famer. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about his career before we potentially talk about who is going to be in that number 19 in 2025. Martin Trix Jr. actually joined the sport in the early 2000s with his own family's race team, his father's race team. He was eventually picked up by Dale Earnhardt Jr., to Junior Motorsports at that time was known as Chance 2. He was quickly making a name for himself as he went on to win two Bush Series championships before getting to the Cup Series. He moved up to the Cup Series with DEI, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, ended up getting a win at his home racetrack of Dover Motor Speedway. But after that win at Dover, it seemed like a good portion of his career was a lot of hardships, a lot of difficult places to potentially even work at for the driver of the number 19. As a young driver, he joined a race team that was beginning to fall apart from the inside out. I'm talking about DEI, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. It was only there for just a couple of seasons before DEI merged with Ganassi Racing. He moved on to a new race team with a new manufacturer in the sport being Michael Waltrip racing with Toyota. We finally began to see that talent that he really showed off in the Xfinity series with those two championships. Then was involved with that whole spin gate scenario at Richmond. We're not going to get too much into that in this video. It ended up costing Martin Truex Jr. not just his sponsorship. It ended up costing him his job because he did not have a lot of funds, a lot of sponsorship. And at this point, a, a former promising young driver who won two Bush Series championships seemed like his career could potentially be dead and gone. So after leaving MWR, he had to go to a single car operation who seemed to be growing, but not a big race team at all. And of course, I'm talking about Furniture Row Racing. What happened with Martin Truex Jr. and Furniture Row Racing, in my opinion, was beautiful. It's not just one of my favorite moments in the history of NASCAR. It's one of my favorite moments in the history of sports. A huge underdog story. Martin Truex Jr., this driver that has shown that he has an immense amount of talent, but has never really had that phenomenal opportunity. And then you have this young race team of Furniture Row Racing, 
who a lot of people, including myself at that time, written them off as pretty much a backmarker team. That first year with Furniture Row was tough. It was really tough for Martin Truex and the team. They ended up figuring out an alliance with Joe Gibbs Racing, and I really think that helped up their performance pretty huge. It ended up giving a great opportunity to Martin Truex Jr. He was actually finally going to be racing a quality car for the next two years. He was getting wins. He was proving to drivers and race teams that Furniture Row Racing and Martin Truex Jr. aren't just here to get a couple extra bucks and have a little bit of fun on the weekend, they're here to win races and win a championship. Then in 2017, he got it. Martin Truex Jr. won the 2017 Cup Series Championship with Furniture Row Racing. Like I said, one of my favorite stories, and not just NASCAR, but all of sports, I love these underdog stories. And then around a year after this championship with Furniture Row Racing, and it was announced that Furniture Row Racing was going to close their doors at the end of the 2018 season. A real big shock and a big surprise from the sport. At the end of the season, Martin Truex Jr. moved on to the number 19 for Joe Gibbs Racing, bringing his crew chief, Cole Pern, along initially. And that's where Martin Truex Jr. has resided ever since has gotten a good amount of wins has been competing for championships at joe gibbs racing won the regular season championship just last season and this year it's kind of the same thing martin shrix jr is a championship contender this season has been strong all year has yet to get that victory but has been really competitive we'll have to see if he's able to go out on top with the championship but a great job by martin shrix jr a phenomenal career At this time of this recording, he has 34 wins, including two Coca-Cola 600s, a Southern 500. Unfortunately, was never able to get that Daytona 500, even though he came real close to edging out his current teammate of Denny Hamlin one year. I want to get everybody's thoughts, though. What did you think about Martin Trix Jr.'s career? And overall, what was your favorite moment for Martin Trix Jr.'s career? Mine has to be that championship With Furniture Row, I think that's the low-hanging fruit. But some of you may say when he won at Dover for his first race. Or maybe maybe even when he won at Dover and then his brother won the Xfinity Series race. That was a great moment as well. All right, now that we got the Truex talk out of the way, we'll miss Truex. But the question is, who replaces him at Joe Gibbs Racing? Who drives that fourth entry at Joe Gibbs Racing? And I would assume there's potentially even more candidates than the ones I'm about to name. But I would consider five legitimate candidates to drive for Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025. Let's start with Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe has been rumored, from what I've seen for the most part of the last month, month and a half, to drive the number 21 for Wood Brothers. But over the last week, week and a half, we've heard these talks of Chase Briscoe could be a top candidate for that number 19. And Bob Pockris even reiterated yesterday after the potential announcement that was forthcoming that Chase Briscoe is the top candidate to drive that number 19. And actually, it makes a lot of sense. Chase Briscoe brings in sponsorship and dollars to the race team. He's a great team player from what I hear. And I also hear he's one of the hardest working drivers in the sport. He's there working with the team at the shop day in and day out. The second candidate I have to name, a young talent, probably one of the most popular, well-known young talents in our sport right now. A lot of people are pointing at this guy at being the future of NASCAR, and that would be Corey Heim. Corey Heim, of course, already part of TRD, the Toyota Racing Development Program, racing over there at Tricon in the Truck Series has had much success. In my opinion, has completely dominated the Truck Series this season and also looked extremely strong last year getting a bunch of wins. So I would definitely keep your eye on Heim time potentially taking this spot as, like I said, he is a young talent. And I know a lot of teams and a lot of man- and all three manufacturers would probably love to have Corey Heim on one of their race teams. The next candidate will be Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson has been rumored to be talking to a bunch of race teams, including Richard Childress Racing, 
Front Row Motorsports. Noah Gregson is clearly a talented race car driver. He proved that in the Xfinity Series, and he's done really well this season with Stuart Haas Racing. He also brings a little bit of sponsorship. I wouldn't say he brings as much sponsorship to the table as Chase Briscoe, but that is if Bass Pro Shops doesn't continue. And what I think, I think next year, Bass Pro Shops ups their sponsorship on Noah Gregson, ups their money spent on Noah Gregson racing in the Cup Series. Bass Pro Shops has had a long-lasting relationship with Noah Gregson and with Martin Truex Jr. leaving, retiring at the end of the year. That frees up a lot of sponsorship dollars to put the logo on Noah Gregson's car for more races. Plus, Noah Gregson has a pre-existing relationship with Toyota. He came up through the ranks with TRD, drove for Kyle Busch Motorsports in the truck series. This driver, I could see racing for Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025, even though I haven't heard very many rumors or talks about it. The next driver I feel like would make a lot of sense, even though I don't hear anybody mentioning this name as a driver that races for Joe Gibbs Racing next season. And I think that's because people may think that this driver might not be quite experienced or ready enough for the Cup Series, and that would be Chandler Smith. Chandler Smith has came up through the Toyota Racing Development Program. He was part of colleague last season, but quickly switched back to Toyota to race for Gibbs in the number 81 in the Xfinity Series this season. And this season overall, I'd say, has been a successful one for Chandler Smith. I'd say the last month and a half, maybe even two months for Chandler has been pretty difficult. He hasn't looked as strong as he did at the very start of the season, but he's already part of Joe Gibbs racing. He's came up through the program and he shows that he has a lot of talent and a lot of potential. I could potentially see him getting this ride. And my last one is potentially the most out of box prediction when it comes to this ride, but there has been rumors there has been rumblings that this could be a possibility. I even mentioned it in my video breaking down some of these silly season rumors just two days ago. And that is Kyle Busch having a reunion with Joe Gibbs Racing. Before I get too deep into this, overall, I, I don't see this one happening, even though I would love, I would love to see this happen. I would really want to see Kyle Busch go back to Joe Gibbs Racing. The big problem when it came to Kyle Busch and the separation with Joe Gibbs Racing was the lack of sponsorship, the lack of dollars coming in to have Kyle Busch in that car. Well, ever since Kyle Busch left Joe Gibbs Racing, he has figured out a way to get a bunch of new sponsorship on his number eight car. Obviously, a company like Lucas Oil would not follow him to Joe Gibbs Racing. I would also count out probably Cheddar's, maybe even 3 Chi. I wouldn't say he has enough sponsorship to fill up a whole season, but with the rumors of Kroger moving over to Joe Gibbs Racing, I don't know if they actually ever made that official, but there's been a lot of talks about Kroger going over to Joe Gibbs Racing. They could cover up a lot of that year, and if they were willing to sponsor Ricky Stenhouse week in and week out, they'll definitely be willing to sponsor Kyle Busch week in and week out, a two-time Cup Series champion. But I think the big question here is with his contract. It sounds like his old, I've said this about driver's contracts before, there's always loopholes. There's always ways of getting out of driver's contracts. These contracts are written for either the team or the driver to pretty much leave whenever they please. Not all of them are like that, but a good amount of these driver contracts are kind of like that. You've noticed that over the years, there's always drivers that leave their contract early, whether that's going to a new team or just getting let go from their contract because of performance or sponsorship issues. But the way Kyle Busch contract sounds like it's a two-year deal. We're getting towards the end of that two-year deal with a third-year option. So I'm not sure exactly what that entails. I would assume that's a driver option where Kyle Busch can decide if he wants to stay or go, or it might be a team option. I'm not exactly sure on all the details, but it's just something to keep your eye out for. This is a possibility. Like I said, highly unlikely that Kyle Busch has that reunion with Joe Gibbs Racing for 2025, but it is on the table. I would, I would say there is a possibility 
of it happening. But give me your thoughts down below. What did you think of the five candidates I gave you? Which one of these five do you think is most likely to end up at Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025? And is there potentially a driver that, that I didn't even mention that could make this move to Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025 that you think will drive for JGR? But that'll do it for me. Congrats to Martin Truex Jr. on a wonderful career. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace.